Radio. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Crypto Current. Your host here, Richard Carthon. Today, I got a very special one for you. So, Usually this person resides in LA, but they are currently traveling the world, currently out in Italy, and I am definitely envious. Hopefully you get to go and visit some of the places that he's been telling me about before we got on the show. But we have Rock Zacharias, who's with Doge Chain Quick Swap, and he's doing some really amazing stuff. And we're going to spend a lot of time unpacking Doge Chain today. So how are you doing today, Rock? Doing great. Yeah, like, uh, like you mentioned, uh, in Italy at the moment. So it's been a, a nice vacation with the girlfriend. A little, little mixture of business and pleasure, but a lot of fun, yeah. For sure. Um, well, man, it's really cool all the different things that you have going on in the world of Web3. But before we dive into all of that, first, I want to learn a little bit more about you. Can you give us a little bit of background on yourself? Uh, yeah, sure. So I started in crypto in 2015. Uh, but long before that, I was working in digital currencies and in another extent with uh, in-game currencies and video games. So uh, I played a game called EverQuest and we would sell platinum to uh, a lot of people. But our biggest customers was Brock Pierce uh, from EOS, who created EOS later. And then uh, Jonathan Yantis, who created WAX. Uh, so kind of funny, we were, you know, working together in digital currency stuff uh, before long. This was 23 years ago. So this was long before Bitcoin was even thought up. Um, but it, I think, gave us all the, the kind of wherewithal, the understanding of like digital scarcity, uh, that, that there could actually be value in digital goods uh, that have some kind of scarcity. To them, you know, so selling platinum and swords in a video game. Uh, but yeah, so when I found out about Bitcoin in 2015, I was I was really almost instantly like you know hooked. Um, made sense to me. And then uh, in 2017, we created Lunar Digital Assets, which is a marketing incubation firm. We have worked on projects like uh, our biggest one is Polygon, uh, which is uh, everybody knows Polygon. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and then from there, because of all our contacts. We uh, created QuickSwap, which is the largest DEX on Polygon, and which I'm a co-founder of that. So uh, CEO of LDA, uh, co-founder of QuickSwap. And then most recently, we actually launched another uh, uh, Polygon chain called Doge Chain. So um, Doge Chain is a fork basically of Polygon, or it uses the Polygon Edge uh, SDK, which is basically using Polygon tech. We made some alterations that are interesting. Uh, one of them is that it uses Doge as, as the gas. So you can imagine um, when people are interacting with Doge, they're not, um, they're not actually benefiting Doge a lot of the time. For example, if you're trading on Robinhood, it doesn't really help the Doge ecosystem directly. I mean, it's nice that people are trading it and things like that. Uh, or if you're on, I think BlockFi has Doge borrowing and lending. But, you know, they make the fees from this. They, you know, it benefits them, which is great that they're doing it for Doge. But we thought that it would be very interesting to create a chain, uh, an EVM chain. So think, you know, Ethereum or Polygon, but on top of Doge now. So this uses Doge's gas. And then there's a plethora of other things that people have kind of started thinking of ways. How can we benefit the Doge community? So people are doing like Doge burns, uh, where let's say um, you have like a NFT marketplace. You you could either have the currency of the NFT marketplace be uh, wrapped Doge, or you could uh, take one percent of all fees and buy Doge with them and then burn it, uh, or drop the Doge to holders of Doge uh, and things like that. Or you can, uh, you know, other things you could do is make a borrowing and lending market. Uh, and use Doge as collateral, or a stablecoin and use Doge as collateral. That would be, I think, an interesting one that I'd kind of like to see someone do. No one's done that one yet. Uh, all the rest are being worked on. But uh, yeah, stablecoin. I think people are probably scared because you know you don't want a very volatile asset like Doge backing you know your stablecoin. You would have to be very over collateralized, or maybe have a basket of other currencies or uh, some other clever mechanics to make it work. But I think that would be kind of a fun one. Uh, but yeah, so basically we created this chain so that anyone can uh, build anything on it, DeFi, 
games, NFTs, uh, meme coins, uh, and then it all benefits the Doge ecosystem. So we're bringing uh, a whole new like digital utility to Doge outside of the previous utilities, which would be trying to get people to take it as payment at a you know restaurants or you know for a Tesla or at a Dallas Mavericks game <laughs> with Mark Cuban. Um, so those are cool. And then, you know, the other one is, uh, tipping, we do a lot of tipping with Doge, like on Twitter and, in, uh, Telegram and things like that, which is cool. But, uh, we think this is probably a lot more interesting to be able to really build anything you can imagine, you know, on web three. Uh, now you have Doge not just being used in the physical world, but it's a digital currency. Let's use it in the digital world. Right. And and thank you for that uh, intro and and giving us a really good understanding of of what Doge Chain is, is is trying to accomplish. I do want to take two quick steps back just to your experience in in this realm. You know, coming from a place where you know you got to work with other people who founded really pretty large change from you know uh, EOS and looking at what everything that's been going on with Wax and the NFT space and all of that, and then you having an incubation that helped to uh, bring Polygon to the masses and the huge success that Polygon has been having in all their partnerships and everything else. And, and, you know, even creating QuickSwap to be able to have a DEX now that can trade in out of different uh, chains and uh, on, on top of, uh, of, of the Polygon network and quick shout out to Samip. We had him on the show previously, had a really cool conversation that actually led to me getting more involved in the Polygon space, just because I had more access to these different uh, tools. But, you know, you take all of that experience and you, you start to look at a lot of different areas where you could potentially have impacts. Now, my first question to you is, of all the ecosystems or, or even looking at the different coins you could have chosen, why Doge? Like, wh what was it about Doge where you're like, yep, this makes sense. I want to bu build and bring this, <coughs> this group into the Polygon ecosystem. Like, walk us through that, that thinking. So there was... Um... A lot of reasons. Um, our team has uh, a history with Doge. So uh, one of the people on our team, uh, Sam Kazimian from Frax, uh, was one of the first Doge miners uh, at his UCLA, uh, I believe it was UC his UCLA dorm room. He was one of the first, I don't know what it was, like 500 Doge miners or 50 or something, something crazy. He was one of the early miners. Um, and then uh, some others on our team uh, and people that were we were working with to come up with the idea originally, uh, just had a big history in Doge. And then additionally, we just saw that Doge is this massive, massive community. It's huge, diehard community. Uh, one of the biggest in crypto. Uh, something that was interesting to me was, you know, anecdotally, when I go to restaurants or bars or when I'm out anywhere, I'm always talking to people about crypto. And anyone who has crypto, I would say, over 50%, maybe like 70% of the people that I talk to that have had some kind of crypto either started with Doge or have Doge. You know, that's like one of the big ones that's mentioned a lot, which is really kind of crazy. You know, um, I would think it would be Bitcoin and that should be like the starter, but uh, it's, you know, this retail phenomenon is really uh, kicked things up where you know, a large amount of uh, the country, the US and the world hold Doge. So, uh, we saw that there was a huge community and we saw that this community was just yearning for more utility. And it was probably the biggest complaint in the community was just not enough utility. What could we do to make Doge more useful, more, make more people buy it and, as opposed to just speculating and hoping that it'll go up and, you know, looking and like reading tea leaves with Elon Musk's tweets, like, is he talking about Doge and, you know, what's, what's going to happen next? Uh, and like charting and stuff. So we thought, let's, let's make something really interesting that, that will truly bring you know utility to Doge. So, you know, got it. it yeah, go ahead. No, I was going to say that makes a lot of sense. Like the, you want to talk about an absolute raving community. Uh, the the Doge community is not a community to mess with. Um, and to your point, like you said, there's definitely a lot of diversification within the world of crypto. Uh, if, if you're in it at some point, if you don't currently own it, you've probably owned it at some point. Uh, it was just a, a you know a nice entry ray and and back at the the hype the beginning of the uh, last bull cycle that we saw a lot of friends and family I've been talking about forever they only want to talk about Doge 
They don't want to talk about any of the cryptos and talking about how Elon's talking about all this stuff, right? So, but to yeah, your point, you started to a bunch of Doge. <laughs> <And laughs> that wasn't even me telling her. That was just like she just right. They're like, hey, I bought this thing. What do I do with it now? And I was like, yeah. what? <laughs> <laughs> but 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 to your point, bringing out some more of the utilities, you know, it's some of you know, there's there's tipping, like you said. Uh, yes, if you go to a Mavericks game, you could buy some stuff. Once upon a time, you could do some things with Tesla, etc. But trying to add more utility. So you building on top of the Polygon ecosystem, Doge Chain, you have, you know, NFT games, DeFi, and and several other things that are on the way. Can you t- kind of talk through you know, for, for people who are either building on this or, or want to come into this uh, Doge Chain ecosystem? What are some of the things that they can expect and, and start to use? Yeah, it, it was pretty interesting. Um, you know, I was very active with Polygon over the last, you know, four years, watching how the chain evolved and was built and how the original infrastructure happened. I mean, um, we were, the, really, it was just a lot of like hackathons early on. I think in our first year with Polygon, I think they did um, 36 hackathons. Um, and these are, were like young people from colleges, you know, very junior devs mostly. Um but all very interested in you know blockchain technology and, and Polygon did this great job of really incubating like the next generation of crypto people, and now those people are building amazing things years later. I mean, even Samit was one of these you know, college person, but you know, he was one of the first devs to launch something on uh, on Polygon. And um, so I saw how Polygon was built, and it took a long time. I mean, for the first couple of years, it didn't have very much traction. Um, it was you know, some indie games. It had a really cool, rich, like indie kind of game community, which was really cool. Um, and there was a lot of other kind of small things, but nothing really big. No big players had come in, uh, no Aves or Uniswaps or Curves or anything like that. And um, so they really built it from the ground up. Um, and I had seen, uh, I mean, eventually we got all those big names. Uh, you know, I was ta- talking to you earlier about, uh, I think it was, yeah, for the pre-call to this, we were talking about how Polygon is the crazy stuff they're doing now, with like Starbucks and Robinhood and all this. It's just nuts. So, uh, but the point is that going back is that I saw how hard it was to build Polygon over the years. And so I thought, you know, okay, we have the blueprint. We, we were there, you know, just through QuickSwap, we brought hundreds of projects to Polygon through our BD team at QuickSwap. We would want them to come list with us. Projects would reach out to us. We would reach out to projects. We would, you know, target all the biggest projects on like Binance, smart, you know, Binance chain. And we would tell, try to get them to come over to Polygon. We got hundreds to come. But it took years. And so we, I kind of thought it would take that long with those chain. But within, I think it was like the fifth day of it being live, um, we had like someone launched a DEX. We hadn't even launched QuickSwap yet. Someone just launched a DEX. And all these projects started coming. I don't know really where. I mean, I know some of them, a lot of them were from like Binance, a lot of very like speculative people, a lot of, uh, and also just the community we had built, a lot of Doge people. Um, but it was really crazy that within, on like within five days, we had like 600 meme points were launched. It's, it's just like really insane growth. Uh, now there's, you know, we're about two months in, uh, almost two months in now, and we've got, um, over 20 DEXs that I know of, um, some borrowing and lending platforms, uh, a couple NFT marketplaces, um, a bunch of tooling, um, locker, liquidity lockers, and uh, some things for helping projects launch that can't afford audits. So, you know, it makes it's like a template. So you can launch a meme coin using this template, and that template is audited. So you kind of get like an indirect audit, just all kinds of stuff. Um, a lot of the tooling that I'm encouraging right now, or that we're all encouraging, is stuff to help um, get rid of like rug pulls, scammers, uh, bugs, things like that. There is a lot of that on the chain right now. It's actually kind of insane. Um, it's really like a wild west. Um, there's a lot of cool stuff happening, a lot of people making a lot of money in some ways, and then a lot of people losing money. So it's like, you know, it's it's kind of like, you know, you look at, I look at crypto as this wild west in the world of, you know, free market, like almost pure free capitalism, which is amazing in so many ways, but also has a lot of downsides. So, you know, a lot of us, especially here in the U.S. are, you know, well, I'm Italy now, but normally in the U.S., you know, you have the government basically bubble wrapping everything that you do. 
So they have accredited investor laws and all these different things that prevent you from like getting hurt. You know, they want to, they want to help the little guy not get hurt. Um, but those, I think those things, while they have good intent, have really um, hurt the spirit of capitalism and slow capitalism and slow growth down. And so when you can have a more free and open marketplace and for ideas and for businesses and for currencies and DeFi and all, all these things, things can grow fast. And that's what we've seen with crypto over the last you know, 12, 13 years. And that's what we saw on like Ethereum when Ethereum launched with smart contracts. It was just nuts how fast things started growing. All the crazy idea. I mean, I just remember like it was such a cool time being, I guess, a bit younger, you know, that years ago. And um just thinking about all the cool things we can do with Ethereum and like, oh, could I make like a, you know, I was thinking like um like uh torrents, you could download music and upload music. Well, like the one of the problems I always saw with torrents was that like there'd always be a lot of people downloading, but not enough people uploading. And so I always thought it would be cool to attach a token. And so every megabyte you upload or download, you buy, buy or pay a token. And so if you're uploading as much as you're downloading, you just break even. So it's like kind of fair. If you don't want to upload and you only want to download, okay, then you can buy some tokens and just pay for the stuff like that. Or vice versa, if you don't want to download stuff and you just want to make money, you can just be an uploader and you can just like earn toys. So there's like, I just remember all these crazy ideas always going through my head about what can be built. And we've seen so many cool things be built with Ethereum and, you know, there's big books on DeFi and then NFTs and meme coins and all, all this um, games now. So um, when you when you unlock just that open kind of this Turing complete, uh, these, these programming languages and ways for people to build whatever they can imagine, it's, you just see so much growth in it. It's really cool to be a part of. But uh, on Doge Chain, it is high risk right now. Um, but, you know, we are seeing some, you know, crazy gains and, and crazy losses. I think I saw, you know, one project was uh, like 360,000% gains and just like, but then, you know, other projects that are like minus 99%. So, you know, you got to be really careful with this stuff. I, I, I focus more on like the, the DeFi primitives, the actual like DeFi, you know, uh, financial Legos and things that I think are you know, more blue chip type stuff. But for a lot of other people, they like this uh, kind of risky, uh, even dare I say, like gambly type of environment where they can try to predict what's going to be the successful first movers on this chain. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, not to bring it too close to the the regular market way, but like in a lot of ways, these these are the penny stocks. These are the ones where you you are really going for the gusto, but definitely have a high chance of of losing it all. And for some people, they have that risk profile, and it it's fine. Um, you only got to strike gold once for it to really have paid off and to lead into other potential opportunities. But I, you have it's, such you. You know, yeah. like we're in we're in a market right now where people are not having fun, where people are like it's doom and gloom. We're like on the brink of World War Three. We've got COVID lockdowns for years. People are depressed because they couldn't leave their house for so long, and now that they can, now like the economy is tanking, and so like the world's in a weird place. And uh, I think that's one of the cool things about Doge is it really uh, makes the world a little more fun. And I think that's why Elon likes it so much. And uh, that's what we're trying to do on Doge Chain. Everything we do, we try we all the projects, like we've had over 200 projects apply for like grants and support, uh, dev support, um, marketing support, et cetera. And one of the things we really tell them and encourage them is like, if you want us to support you, it has to be fun. Because right. that's that's what this chain is. It's like a place where people could come have fun and still do all the serious stuff, but you know, and try to keep it a, a more fun flavor. Yeah, I think that's a really good and critical point of it. Um, it's Obviously, people are trying to build it right now. It's a, it's a bear market. And and kind of the question that I had for you, is with you being in a unique situation where you've been in the space since 15, so seven years now, you've experienced multiple bear cycles, multiple bull cycles, and you've seen a project like Polygon have to grind for years before you really start to see that first amount of traction. For those who are listening and are currently building in the space, what kind of not necessarily advice, but like what kind of insights can you provide to them while they're kind of maneuvering through this, uh, these bearish moments? I would say just stick with it. Really in crypto, um, kind of more than anything just takes time to win because, I mean, you can 
even if you don't bet on the best things, I mean, the simplest thing is just buy some Bitcoin, you know, maybe some Ethereum if you want to, if, if you don't know much, you could, you know, maybe Polygon. Um, but uh, it really kind of in a lot of ways doesn't matter because you'll, you'll learn if you just stick with it, you'll learn. And then eventually when the bull market comes, I mean, it's everything is very nice for everyone. So um, just time, stick with it and don't like, don't get down from the bear market, have some good conviction, hopefully. Um, I mean, I highly recommend people to really start with Bitcoin, focus on learning about Bitcoin. That's where the fundamentals are. That's where you get your kind of, you know, your high school degree in like, why does decentralization matter? Uh, and then with that good foundation, then you can start playing with the other more risky stuff, uh, but in some ways more fun too. Uh, but uh, yeah, if you know, if you can understand, you know, why Bitcoin matters, then it gives you this grounding in like when you're in a bear market that this is just it's just noise this these price action is just noise in the grand scheme of things this is this technology is what is going to power the future financial systems future money uh and i have no doubt about that and i think if you anyone who spends more than like 10 20 hours studying this like researching it but by that point you should have pretty strong conviction that like this is obviously the future and we don't know what how it will shape up we don't know will bitcoin win will ethereum be the main smart contract platform will polygon be the best you know scaling solution we don't none, these things we don't know like we don't know what the industry will look like in 20 years but we know that this is the future something here is going to win and um and it's going to change the world and you know, i think it already is definitely already is and is is definitely helping to change a lot of lives in a lot of different ways, um, both from an innovation standpoint, um, making life uh, a little bit more fun, and then even the fiscal part, where you're seeing new generational wealth being created that has never had the opportunity before. Um, for all those who are listening right now, whether they are in the Doge community or not, but they're like, yep, this sounds like a lot of fun. I haven't had fun in a while. I want to have some fun building in the Doge chain ecosystem like what does that process look like how can someone come and be uh get started with those chain there's uh well if you want to build there's a application i don't know uh where it is it might be on the website i think it's pinned in telegram in our telegram group which is I that for you. I think it's um at those chain family that's our um twitter is at those chain family okay so the Telegram is Doge Chain official, uh, but I think uh, let's see, actually it's not pinned in there. Um, maybe we could add it to like show notes afterwards or something. But um, basically, just dig around. You'll find it. If you dig a little bit, ask in the Telegram group. Uh, you'll you'll find someone who will link to the form, and then uh, you can apply, and then we can either give you uh, some support through grants or through uh, developer help or marketing help. But uh, something that's really interesting that we're building. So every Friday we do um, a project spotlight. So we have a few projects on to talk uh, about what they're building on Doge Chain and some really cool ones. Uh, really, it, we keep it pretty fun and exciting, I think. And then uh, at the end of it, we do something pretty funny that like, kind of shows that we're in this for fun is that we have a shit coin showdown. So we just allow anyone in the audience, and these are pretty big, you know, Twitter spaces. I, like the first one had like, we had 9,000 uh, viewers, not concurrently, uh, but over the, the week, uh, you know, over like a week coming back and watching it total, it was like 9,000. So uh, these are pretty big Twitter spaces. And um, at the end, we just let anyone come up and talk. Um, like it doesn't matter who you are. We don't care. We don't pre-screen it. We just let anyone come up, and you can shill your project, shill something you like on uh, Doge Chain, or like we always encourage people that don't like us or don't like what we're doing to come on and say, you know, talk some trash. We don't. We haven't gotten any. I'm really surprised because, um, you know, you mentioned that it's funny that the little sidetrack here, but you mentioned how uh, the Doge community is very like uh, I forget what word you use, but they're very strong and they're very Kind of crazy and very serious <laughs> about Doge, and so like there's actually a lot of people in the Doge community who don't like what we're doing, who think that uh, we're using like the Doge name for profit, and uh, why else don't they like it? Um, I forget the reasons, but it's like a huge 
thing. There's like, they were going crazy for a while. It was actually some of the most engagement we were getting was from like these hardcore Doge, like Doge Maxis. Like, you know, you have, you know, your Bitcoin Maxis that say like, oh, you shouldn't use an exchange to trade Bitcoin. It's like, okay, I mean, I agree you should have, you know, he's not your coin, he's a ledger. But like, look, if people want to venture out and try Ethereum or uh, other things, you know, don't be so upset by it. Um, that I don't think that that's good for anyone. I think having an open dialogue about things is is good and trying new things. So like we're building Doge Chain and some Doge people don't like it. And I think most do, but we've had, you know, pretty incredible like growth. Um, I think, um, yeah, so there's got to be thousands of coins launched on top of Doge Chain. Now we have, we had more, we've had uh, many days where we had more transactions than all of Ethereum. Uh, then all of Polygon, uh, pretty much, I think maybe more than like every chain out there. Um, actually, I don't know if we passed Binance because Binance Smart Chain has a, a lot of transactions. I'm not sure. But anyways, so we've had huge growth. So clearly there's like a product market fit. There's um, there's an appetite for this. There's an appetite for memes. There's an appetite for NFTs and have a place where it's all kind of concentrated uh, and benefits the, the, the king meme coin himself, Doge. Um, it's just, it's been like a real kind of hit. And uh, yeah, people are calling it the meme chain. I, I kind of like that one. Uh, or someone was saying the other day in the chat, uh, the meme chain, the meme, uh, where memes and dreams are made. <laughs> it's just, people, are, people are just having fun with it. And it makes, it makes me happy. Um, and it's been fun to be part of so far. Gotcha. Well, that's definitely really cool. Um, for everyone listening, make sure you go give them a listen to me. The, the fact y'all have that many transactions is definitely something to not skim over. Um, so I know I'm, I'm personally probably going to go check it out and see what kind of uh, memes coins are, are being built over in that ecosystem. But um, as we kind of wrap up here, man, I'll, I always like to finish up with a couple of uh, fun questions. And the first one is going to be, with all the information and knowledge that you've been able to garner over the last seven years, if you go and impart one to two pieces of wisdom to yourself when you first got started, what would you tell yourself? It's kind of relevant to this, but be careful with altcoins. So like with Bitcoin, I don't think you ever take profit. You just hold it forever for you know a generation. Uh, Ethereum and some other good blue chips like Polygon as well, but... There's a lot of like high risk stuff where if you get like 100x or 1000x or whatever, pull some profit off, take some off the table. Um, so you got to kind of separate the mindset of like Bitcoin is the thing I hold forever. Altcoins, you play in and you pull some profit and you buy more Bitcoin with it or more Ethereum. Um, so that would be one thing I would tell myself. And um, I guess too, maybe not something I would tell myself, but just tell others is... Um, just really go hard with this, like just crypto in general. Uh, I tell people this almost every day, like any young entrepreneurs I meet, people in school, people go to school to be doctors. I mean, that's what I was supposed to be until I found crypto in 2015. And I just, I, I finished my pre-med and had published genetics research and uh, had honors and was ready for med school. And then I found crypto and I was like, I'm out. <laughs> this is it. This is what I'm going to do. But um, I remember... Um, like I stopped going to the gym because I was just like, uh, this is, it was, this was in the midst of like, I think 2017 when things were really going off. And I was like, I just, I got to focus every waking moment I have on this. Or like, I feel like if I miss out and I, if I don't do everything I can, I'm going to look back in life and regret it. Uh, and so I really did go all in on it. And, um, you know, we've, we've done great with Lunar Digital Assets and QuickSwap and Doge Chain. And uh, it's just been, I mean, I've dedicated my life to this. I spend every hour of every day I'm listening to a podcast. If I'm not on a podcast or working or, you know, whatever, um, like if I'm cooking, if I'm cleaning, uh, if I'm jogging, if I'm at the gym, it, everything I do when I'm in the shower, um, I'm always listening to some kind of content about crypto, whether it's an audio book or a podcast. Um, and I, so I really suggest that people do that. And um, like, really take this seriously. This this is the future, and there's no other industry in the world that's so exciting and that also you know has the most potential for profit too. So like, the great thing about crypto is that we're changing the world, but we're also making a lot of money doing it, which is uh, you know a cool combination. Yeah, I definitely say a fun yeah. double whammy. Um, I, I think, think those I are two. A, uh, 
an eyelash in my eye. <laughs> no, no worries. Give me one. For all Give those listening in, just a just a reminder that um, we do uh, record this over on YouTube. So if you want to come over and, and watch the interview and, and some of our interviews, um, definitely go and do that. But Rock definitely just left some really good nuggets. Um, again, which is exit strategies as it relates to your alts that you invest in at what threshold, if you start to make a certain amount of return, do you pull some profit? And then once you take some of that profit, what do you reinvest that into? Um, and then the second is just to spend the time. Uh, they say to be an, an expert in something, you have to spend 10,000 hours. And so uh, Rock clearly is, is doing that between uh, listening to the content constantly and, and, and being a part of this space. So uh, I think those are two really good nuggets. But um, Rock, as we wrap up here, what is a final thought that you want to leave with each and every listener here today? Um, yeah, just hang in there with the bear market. Don't worry so much about it. This is such a great time. If you can work in this industry, um, in whatever way I, I often tell people start with like join an ambassador program, you know, click swap has an ambassador program. Um, there, a lot of projects have ambassador programs. So just go and, and start meeting people in the industry, be in telegram, be in discord, be on Reddit, um, learn a skill, maybe uh, graphic design or, um, writing articles or whatever you're good at, um, just try to find a way to get into this industry. Uh, like whatever you do, get in the, get work in the industry. Like don't just buy crypto, but earn your crypto. Um, yeah, I think, I actually think I'm maybe a little contrary to a lot, what a lot of people are thinking right now. So obviously like global macro outlook is really bad right now with Ukraine and Inflation is not really getting better, even though they're raising the rates so much. Uh, so we're probably going to have dark times ahead uh, in the macro. But I think it's important to zoom out and think about the context that, um, while you know everyone's worried about if we uh, raise rates and and start doing quantitative tightening and all these things, it's going to be bad for risk on assets like crypto, uh, really for all assets, right? But really, this is what we were waiting for. We were waiting for the global financial system to implode. And it's happening right here in front of us in a lot of ways. It's showing cracks at least, you know, cracks in the armor. And so if this is the solution, if Bitcoin is the solution and DeFi and Ethereum and all this is the solution, then if the world is imploding and the financial systems are crumbling, then really... These things should, this is rocket fuel for Bitcoin. This is what we needed. You know, I, I, I don't want to wish, you know, the markets to go bad on anyone because there's a lot of pain that will happen in the midst of all this. But this is really what kind of needs to happen in some ways for people to understand why Bitcoin matters, why crypto matters so much. We don't need some central people like planning the economy for us. Um, it's pretty obvious for, if you look back in history, it, like, communism and socialism, uh, it doesn't work very well. Like central planning doesn't work. So why are we still doing central planning with money? Why, why do the government control money? Um, it, it, every transaction, there's like the commodity or the service that you're buying, and then there's the money you're buying it with. So we have a free market kind of for one half, the commodity and services side. And then, but the money side is controlled by government and they inflate it away and do all this weird stuff with it that distorts the the market signals makes a lot more noise in the system. So um, we have the solution right here in front of us. I am maybe a little different than other people in the opinion that maybe we're closer to the end of this bear market uh, than people think. I know it seems very bleak and, and bad right now, but if this is the solution, the worse things get in the financial markets, then more likely people will start to realize that this is the solution. Unfortunately, you know, there's the quote, the market can remain uh, uh, irrational longer than you can remain solvent. So like, can, will people realize that this is the solution, you know, before it hurts, you know, can people take the pain of this bear market long enough that until the point where people realize this is the solution? Um, so uh, yeah, just hold, don't get too scared. I think most people holding now are not going to sell. It's like, if you've been through this much, you, you, you're holding at this point, I hope. But uh, yeah, hang in there. It's, it's going to get better. I don't know how long it'll take. I don't want to give you a that, but um, this is the future. So uh, it'll all get better. This is the future. You heard it here 
And uh, this is a guy who's experienced multiple bear markets. So go back, listen to that a few times. Yeah, and this hopefully is my third bear it, market. So. Third bear market. So you heard it from someone who's in, endured before. Um, but again, Rock, thank you so much for spending some time with us. Uh, for all those who are listening, um, go to dogechain.dog to get more information. Um, you also can find all their socials and everything else um, on that website. And we'll make sure to share everything in the show notes as well. But again, Rock, oh, with, also, uh, if you have oh. Doge, uh, I'll throw one more thing in. If you have Doge, you can get free Doge Chain to- DC token. So we did a big airdrop early on for people who are bridging their Doge over. So you bridge your Doge to use it as gas or on Dex, et cetera. Uh, so we did a big airdrop there. Uh, people got like eight times the amount they bridged over. So like, and they didn't have to pay anything. They just got it for free. Um, but uh, now we're going to have uh, additional Doge like airdrop type stuff in the future. So bridge your Doge over, come play with it. Uh, same as Polygon uses MetaMask, just like Ethereum. Uh, so bring your Doge over, play with it, and then you'll be eligible to get some of these airdrops uh, that we'll be doing. Uh, in the future too. And we're giving away uh, a couple of Tesla, more, at least one Tesla, but probably multiple Teslas. So you can get a Tesla and you can get a free airdrop if you already own some Doge. So make sure you go check it out. And again, Rock, thanks so much for spending time with us. And for everyone listening, stay cryptocurrent. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Cryptocurrent. Cryptocurrent is a cryptocurrency and blockchain education platform that's bridging the gap between the curious newcomers who are just discovering the space and the thought leaders who are shaping its future. All opinions expressed by Richard Carthon, the Cryptocurrent team, and their guests on this show are exclusively their own opinions. This show and any other Cryptocurrent production is exclusively for informational purposes. 